Let's pretend for a little bit that the Marvel Cinematic Universe isn't running on fumes, as I've already discussed, that their big box office blowouts won't only have been reached by Sony's celebration of their film legacy, practically sidelining the MCU material, and that the MCU will be successful long enough to reach the supposed accumulation of what seems like a maj page of styles, directions, and characters to set up with King Dynasty and Secret Wars. With Tony Stark and Black Widow resting in peace, Steve Rogers retired, Hulk on another planet, and Hawkeye and now Thor spending more time with their families than anything else, the original Avengers team that we once knew is basically now kaput, and a new Avengers team will essentially have to take the helm. But again, it's hard to pin down who would take that new mantle, what with so many styles and tones seemingly not fitting together. And while some may argue that that's the whole point of the Avengers, a team that's not supposed to fit together but manages to work together regardless, there was a certain chemistry into how the Avengers bounced off each other that, I'll just be honest, no matter who you choose for this new team, will probably be sorely missing. Nevertheless, they're going to give it their best shot. And based on the movies and shows that have come out and will be coming out before Kang Dynasty, I've developed my theoretical team of the six new Avengers that will most likely try to take on the Council of Kangs in Kang Dynasty, and most likely fail miserably, leading everyone to come together and fight in Secret Wars. First, let me quickly throw out there who I don't think it will be. Any teams, like the already confirmed not to be in Kang Dynasty, X-Men, or Fantastic Four, but also the Eternals and Thunderbolts, because, you know, why would you have a team on a team? Though much like the Guardians, they'll most likely join this new six-man team in a big, massive blowout in Secret Wars. Moon Knight or She-Hulk could be wrong, but the Disney Plus shows are kind of hit or miss in terms of actually playing a part in the new MCU legacy or just being content for the sake of content, and these two shows come off to me as the least purposeful. Shuri, because much like T'Challa, running a kingdom doesn't leave much room for team-ups, and finally, Spider-Man. Yeah, I know, everyone was speculating him as the most likely to lead the Avengers, and I'm saying he won't be, blah blah blah. Well, as iconic as he is as a character, there's one problem with him being even one of six iconic characters on the next Avengers team. Sony. Spider-Man is virtually the only bankable franchise Sony has left. There's no way in Hades that they let Disney make him one of the leading icons in the movie's marketing campaign. They barely let him have a presence in the airport battle in Civil War, and like, how much of a role did he play in Infinity War? I mean, look at how small he is on the poster. So nope, no Spider-Man on the Avengers. With all that said, let's start off with the most obvious kickoff to this journey in the first place, the man who not only faced up against Kang and knows how he thinks and functions, or at least thinks that he does before he takes into account the different personalities of his variant, but also the one who's most likely terrified and guilty feeling of the fact that he unleashed Kang the way that he did, Ant-Man. We already saw by the end of Quantumania that as much as he's trying to go on with his life and enjoy time with his family, he's on the edge of his seat because Kang warned him that by defeating him, he would unleash a greater evil, essentially, so naturally, he would call for help, much like how he couldn't get the possibility of using the Quantum Realm as a time machine in Avengers Endgame. But who could he reach out to in this case? Well, the man who recruited him to Team Cap, of course, Falcon. I mean, Captain America. Very confusing. I feel like someone patriotic and diplomatic like Sam would be the key to binding a team like this together, and the advantage that he has over Steve is that he understands this modern era and isn't necessarily tainted by the ways of the old days, though his struggle may or may not be feeling the need to honor his old friend, especially now that he's taking up his mantle. So Ant-Man comes to Falcon telling him that Kang is coming and that they need a new set of Avengers, so who does Falcon call? Most likely the only person that he knows who can handle a cosmic being like this, Carol Danvers. These two will most likely be our Cap and Tony of the new Avengers, battling for power, thinking they have the better solution than the other. The difference between Tony and Carol, though, is that Carol has had experience and will most likely get more experience this November, dealing with diplomacy in a more civilized manner. But so has Sam, but since they're dealing with a cosmic being threatening the Earth, something that Sam has actually lost against... Carol will think she has the upper hand, but may or may not take into account the opinions of Earth people, which is where Sam will most likely have to put his foot down. With the message received that a new response team needs to be assembled, Carol immediately reaches out to the new recruit that a lot of you probably forgot she was in contact with previously, Shang-Chi. As promising of a character as I thought he was in his own movie, in a team dynamic, he's most likely going to be like Hawkeye, just kind of in the background, not interacting with too many people. Being an assassin, he could fit into that role nicely, but I don't see someone of his stature bouncing off too many people. Chances are he'll just be a hired hand ready to fight whenever. Nothing necessarily wrong with that, I'm sure he'll kick ass, but conversationally, I'd just don't imagine too much going on in his case. But of course, you also can't involve Captain Marvel without one of her new colleagues about to join her on the big screen in November. 
and partially because we don't know too much about Monica Rambeau or the extent of her powers yet, I'm going to insert Miss Marvel as her trainee. That she may or may not pawn off on Shang-Chi. Yeah, I mean, think about it. She could compare his ten rings to her bracelets and ask him all kinds of questions and annoy the crap out of him. It's like Hawkeye and his sidekick all over again. I also feel like between this team and the original Avengers team consisting entirely of adults, a young perspective being thrown into the mix could be a much needed fresh perspective. And again, with Spider-Man being hogged around too much, chances are this will be the best option to roll with. All these big superheroes up against what some timelines consider to be their ruler will most likely catch the attention of the TVA, which will be good as Loki will most likely know more about how to defeat his new variants as well. And what an ironic twist that would be, having the main threat from the very first Avengers movie being a helping hand in what could be the MCU's final big swing. Not to mention, it'll also most likely bring out the worst in Falcon, seeing as how he fought against his best friend, which would be an interesting dynamic since no one else on the team most likely has even heard of him. Season 2 of Loki's show will most likely give us an idea of what Loki will know about Kang and how to stop him in Kang Dynasty, but either way, he knows the most out of all the characters in the franchise. And that's as of March 2023, while we wait to see the rest of Phase 5, let alone 6 when this will all go down, my speculated cast for the new Avengers. I'll admit, creating the spec video has my excitement for the MCU rolling again, and it really has me crossing my fingers that something in the upcoming lineup will catch enough of the public eye to get the box office booming again so that we can finally see this happen. With that said, let me know down in the comments below who you think the new Avengers will and or should be, and Marvel, please try to keep yourselves assembled. We'll